A history of British India was written by what is the answer? It's James Mill. Then the first Governor General of India was Warren Hastings. The National Archives of India came up in the year 1920s. Then the word calligrapher, this means what? This means one who is specialized in the art of beautiful writing. Then census operation are held every 10 years. Fill in the blanks. So the colonial government gave much importance to the practice of surveying. Historians have usually divided India or Indian history into ancient and medieval then modern. This is modern. So medieval and modern. A history of British India is a massive work that is three volume massive work. Mill thought that all Asian societies were at lower level, lower level of civilization than Europe. Then the British established and specialized institutions like archives and museums here to preserve important documents. State whether each of the following statement is true or false. So the British were, were very particular about preserving official documents. This is true. Printing began to spread by the middle of 20th century. False. The periodization of Indian history offered by James Mill was not at all accepted. This is false. There was, this was somewhat accepted. That's why we are talking about it. The British carried out detailed surveys by the early 19th century in order to map the entire country. And this is true. James Mill glorified India and its culture in his book, A History of British India. No. This is false because he glorified British rather than glorifying India. Match the items given in column A with column B. So a place where historical documents or records of a government are kept, these are known as archives. A building in which objects of historical or scientific interest are kept to show them to the public. The answer is museum. An important taste of British administration. This is carrying out surveys and subjugation of one country by another is colonization. Name the events for which specific dates can be determined. Say the year king was crowned, the year he got married, the year he had a child, the year he fought a particular battle or year he died. So these are certain events where specified dates can be determined. What was an important aspect of histories written by the British historians in India? So the rule of each governor general was an important aspect here. Who was James Mill? So he was a Scottish economist and political philosopher and he is known for his book A History of British India. What was Mill's opinion about the Asian societies? So in Mill's opinion all the Asian societies were at lower level of civilization than Europe. What evil practices, according to James Mill, dominated the India or Indian social life before the British came to India? So, according to Mill, the evil practices that dominated the Indian social life were religious intolerance, the caste taboos, and the superstitious practices. How did paintings project governor generals? So the painting projected governor generals as powerful figures. Why do many historians refer to modern period as colonial? This is because under British rule people did not have equality, freedom or liberty. That is the symbols of 
modernity. Mention one important source used by historians in writing about the last 230 years of Indian history. This is the official records of British administration. What is done under census? It records the number of people living all the provinces of India and gathers information on caste, religions and occupation. What do official records not tell? The official records do not tell what other people in the country felt or what lay behind their actions. So the normal or ordinary people what they felt was not known or cannot be known by this. Why do we try and divide history into different periods? We do it in order to capture the characteristics of a time its central features as they appear to us. How did James Mill view India? James Mill did not cherish any positive idea about India. He has the opinion that all Indian societies were at lower level of civilization than Europe. So according to his telling of history, before the British came to India, the Hindu and Muslim, they ruled the country. And religious intolerance, caste taboos and superstitious practices dominated social life. So he felt that only British rule could civilize India and he suggested that the British could conquer all the territories of India to ensure the enlightenment and happiness of the Indian people. For India, uh, it's not capable of progress without the help of British. Historians divide Indian history into ancient, medieval and modern. But this division too has its problem. What was these problems? So the periodization has been borrowed from the West where the modern period was associated with the growth of uh, the forces of modernity like the science the reasoning, democracy, liberty and equality. So medieval was termed used to describe the society where these features of modern society they do not exist. So it is difficult for us to accept this characterization of modern period. So it is worth mentioning that Indians did not have equality, freedom and liberty under the British rule. So the country also lacked economic growth and progress in that period. Therefore, many historians they refer to modern period as colonial period. Why did the British do not preserve important official documents and letters? So the British felt that the need to preserve all the important official documents and letters, they felt it is very important. They set up record rooms attached to all the administrative institutions. And the village tehsildar's office, the collectorate, the commissioner's office, the provincial secretaries, the law courts all had their record rooms. The British also established specialized institutions like the archives and museums to preserve important records. What do official records not tell? How do we come? to know about them. So official records do not always help us to understand what other people in the country felt and what lay behind their actions. So for that we have diaries of people according to pilgrims, the travelers, autobiographies of important personalities, popular books that were sold in local markets or bazaars. So with the spread of printing press, newspapers, came to be published or they were published and issues began to be debated in public. So leaders and reformers, they wrote to spread their ideas, poets and novelists wrote to express their feelings. How did the British conquer India and establish their rule? So they did by, first of all, they subjugated local Nawabs and Rajas. Then they established control over the economy and society 
collected revenue to meet all their expenses, bought goods they wanted at very lower price and produced crops they needed for export. They bought changes in rulers and the tastes, customs and practices. So they molded, changed everything in their favor and subjugated the country very soon. How did the official records of British administration help historians to write about the last 250 years of Indian history? So the British believed that the act of writing is very important or was important. So they got written or they wrote every instruction, plan, policy decision, agreement and investigation. They thought that once it is being documented, things could be properly studied and debated. And the conviction produced an administrative culture of the memos, notings and reports. So the British were very interested in preserving all important documents and letters. They established record rooms to all administrative institutions like village tehsildar's office, the collectorate, law courts etc. They also set up archives and museums to preserve important records. So letters and memos that move from one branch of administration to smother in the early uh, years of the 19th century can still be read in the archives. So historians can also take help from these notes and reports that district officials prepared or the instructions and directives that were sent by officials at the top of the provincial administrators. How did surveys become important under the colonial administration? As we already said that British were very keen in documenting things. But they also gave importance to the practice of surveying because they also believed that country, if they need to know, they want to know the country properly, if they want to administer it effectively, they need to know the country. So they carried out detailed surveys by the early 19th century in order to map the entire country. So they conducted revenue surveys in the villages. They made efforts to know the topography, the soil quality, the flora, the fauna, the local histories and the cropping pattern. They also introduced census operations held at the interval of every 10 years for the end of 19th century or by the end of 19th century. So they prepared detailed records of the number of people in all provinces of India noting information on caste, religion and occupation separately. So the British also carried on several other surveys like the botanical surveys, zoological surveys, archaeological surveys, forest surveys. So in this way, they gathered all the facts that were essential for administering a country. So these are the extract taken from the textbook. And we need to answer. So we will just read this and then we will try to answer this. Not fit for human consumption. So newspaper provide accounts of the movements in different parts of the country. Here is a report of the police, police strike in 1946. More than 2000 policemen in Delhi refused to take their food on Thursday morning as a protest against their low salaries and bad quality of food supplied to them from the police line kitchen. So as the news spread to the other police station, the men, uh, they also refused to take food. So one of the strikers said the food supplied to us from the police lines kitchen is not fit for human consumption. So even cattle would not eat the chapatis and the dal, which we have to eat. So why did the policemen in Delhi refuse to take their food on Thursday morning? So they did so to protest against the, low, against the low salaries and the inferior quality of food being supplied to them from the police line kitchen. Then how did the men in other police station react when they came to know about the protest? They also refused to take the food. What was the comment of one of the strikers on the food supplied to them? So one of the strikers said that the food supplied to them was not fit for human consumption. Even cattle would not eat the chapatis and dal. That is the food they had to eat. This is a picture. So we need to observe this picture. 
and we need to answer see this is about uh, a book being given from indians to britishers hindustan so what does the above picture try to suggest the picture suggests that indians willingly gave their ancient text scriptures that is shastra to the to the britishers britannia the symbol of british power as if asking her to become the protector of the indian culture explain how this image protects or projects an imperial perception so the image clearly depicts the imperial superiority the image of lion symbolizes superior power the empire in the is the giver and the subjects are always loyal to the throne so this is the picture which is being shown and these are the answers which we talked about this is one of the picture where the documents are being kept so what is it actually so it's a national archives of india when did it come up in 1920s where was it located when delhi was built it was located to the the viceroy space you can say what does the location reflect it reflects the importance of the institution of the britishers